more details on value-added tax implementation announced. Meanwhile, the Free National Movement defends its position on the tax. The long-awaited gaming bill now set to be debated. Human remains found inside a burning home. And the National Congress of Trade Unions announces its Labor Day plans. We've got those stories and more coming up tonight. I'm Dana Smith and MB12 starts now. Happy news tonight. Following more than a year of consultations with international experts from the United States, United Kingdom and New Zealand, Prime Minister Perry Christie says the government will now wait until 2015 to implement value-added tax. To the relief of the private sector, he also revealed the rate of the taxation will be cut in half. The Prime Minister today outlined plans for the major tax policy shift during a three-hour-long presentation of its government's 2014-2015 budget in the House of Assembly. Vonick Toot has the details. The Christie administration intends to implement value-added tax at a rate of 7.5 percent effective January 1, 2015. That's down from the initially proposed rate of 15 percent. Prime Minister Christie says the Ministry of Finance hopes to be in a position of readiness by October 1st. However, he noted sufficient time is needed to launch an in-depth public education campaign and allow the private sector to prepare. There will be one single VAT rate across the board, other than zero rate for exports. One single VAT rate across the board. That is being substantially, Mr. Speaker, reduced to 7.5% from the originally proposed 15%. In addition to cutting the rate of taxation in half, Prime Minister Christie says the Ministry of Finance is proposing fewer exemptions. The full list, he says, will be released shortly. Government initially proposed to implement VAT at a rate of 15 percent on July 1st of this year. However, following advice from international experts, he revealed in March that the rate would be cut and hinted at a new implementation date. Christie says the government and private sector now have seven months to prepare for the new tax regime. We are resourcing the Ministry of Finance to be at full administrative capacity and readiness within government by October 1st, 2014. However, Mr. Speaker, to allow sufficient time for the needed, more in-depth public education campaign and private sector preparation, the VAT will come into effect on January 1st, 2015. Originally, the government proposed reducing customs tariffs, but now that VAT is coming in at 7.5 percent, Christie says that won't be happening. Being able to streamline exemptions and position the VAT rate much lower than in the white paper, the government is not announcing any wide-scale reduction in import duties and excise duties at this time. Based on the revenue performance of VAT early next year, the government may be in a position to consider tariff and excise reductions at the time of the 2015-2016 budget. Despite calls from some private sector groups for a government to consider alternative forms of taxation, Christie says a study conducted by U.S. firm Compass Lexicon has concluded that VAT is by far the superior new tax policy instrument for the Bahamas. That framework, which I believe addresses many of the concerns voiced by the public and the private sector is set out in the VAT bill that I will very soon be laying before the House of Assembly. We will continue to work closely with the private sector going forward in elaborating and finalizing the various rules and guidelines that will be critical for successful VAT implementation. Based on a recommendation from New Zealand VAT experts, the Prime Minister says a three-person task force will be established to oversee this process. The task force, Mr. Speaker, will have a budget of $150,000 at its disposal. They will be tasked with the job of helping to explain the VAT to the business community and the wider public. 
Christie says presentations will be made to various civic and community groups. There will be nightly public service announcements on local TV stations and lengthy infomercials targeting the business community will be produced in the coming months. He says the new proposed rate will yield 3% of GDP on a full year basis. Given the date of implementation, the prime minister says that will amount to some 1.5% of GDP in 2014-2015. Reporting for NB12, I'm Ronnie Toot. Well, the Free National Movement has in the past voiced concerns over VAT implementation, and members today say they welcome the lower rate and the delay. Now, the official opposition has not offered any alternative to VAT, and responding to that criticism, Shadow Finance Minister Peter Turnquist said the Progressive Liberal Party was elected to govern, and the official opposition is not obligated to give an alternative. The people of the Bahamas elected the Progressive Liberal Party to govern based upon the uh, plans that they put forward. The free national movement is not obligated to put forward an alternative. However, we, have, we are studying uh, the uh, reports that have been provided. And uh, as soon as we are uh, comfortable with the information that is now available to us, we will be uh, putting forward our position. The East Grand Bahama MP, flanked by opposition members, said the party is certainly welcoming the delay and rate reduction, but as far as a final position goes, that is still under discussion. Turnquest said the opposition still has questions about how that will be implemented and how it will affect the Bahamian public. With respect to value-added tax itself, uh, it is a um, fairly efficient tax. The question um, that we've always had is the respect to the education, the implementation, um, and uh, uh, the effect that it will have on the most vulnerable in our society. However, although the opposition is, quote, not obligated, Turnquest said the FNM will certainly put forward a position at the appropriate time. He said the party is analyzing documents such as the VAT legislation and VAT studies. Once their efforts are complete, Turnquest said the party will be in a position to state their final position. We want to look at all of the studies, uh, have an opportunity to digest them and to dissect them um, and make sure that um, this is, in fact, the best approach, uh, as, as the, uh, all of the advice seems to be uh, leading to. Um, and we want to make sure that the process of, impl of implementation, implementation uh, is, in fact, um, carried out uh, with uh, respect to the process, respect to the people, and, and done in the most efficient and, and uh, effective manner. The government intends to debate legislation to regularize and tax the web shop industry following the budget debate. In his 2014-2015 budget presentation, Prime Minister Perry Christie told parliamentarians today the taxation of the web shop industry will be retroactive to July 1, 2014. He says the regularization and licensing of the web shop industry and amendments to casino gaming will be included in the gaming bill. It is expected that these comprehensive and necessary reforms will result in considerable benefits to the public purse and the Bahamian economy. The creation of many new jobs, a controlled number of web shop gaming operations, as is the case with casino operations, and upholding of laws and international obligations in accordance with best practice or best practices. He added that the government conservatively expects web shop revenue to provide an intake of 0.14% of GDP in the next fiscal year. I want to be clear on this matter to the effect that the regulatory and taxation regime that will be introduced for the web shops will feature very stringent and demanding standards in terms of levels of controls and accountability. To that end, the government has engaged international experts who will advise on appropriate policy and legal frameworks for the sector. I also wish to advise that the taxation of the web shops will be retroactive, Mr. Speaker, to July 1, 2014. Government intends to regulate web shops by July 1st, despite last year's failed gambling referendum on January 28, 2013. The majority of voters who turned up to the polls voted against the regularization and taxation of the web shop industry and the establishment of a national lottery. However, less than 50% of the electorate voted. 
During his budget presentation, Prime Minister Perry Christie also blasted the Ingram administration for decisively and unequivocally blocking any possibility of competition in the cellular market before January 2014. As a result of the deal, the former government struck with cable and wireless communications back in 2011. Christie says there was no reasonable possibility for the PLP government to introduce or even start the process to introduce a second mobile service operator before the end of BTC's monopoly period last month. The evidence is clear, supported by the record, that the intention at the time the 51 percent was negotiated and agreed was to ensure that the issue of competition in the cellular mobile services was so legislated that competition would be unequivocally denied to Bahamians de jure, de jure until April 2014 and de facto until essentially 2015, having regard to the logistics for introducing competition. As a result, Christie says his government moved swiftly to mobilize a task force to prepare for the award of a second cellular license in the shortest time possible. He says the Bahamas telecommunications company could have had competition one year after government publishes an invitation notice. We anticipate that once an invitation notice is published by government, the entire selection process is expected to take up to six months. I'm saying up to six months because it could be less. I would love it to be less. The new provider should be able to launch services within an additional six months with a view to achieving maximum coverage throughout the Bahamas in the shortest possible time frame. But first, he says the task force has been consulting with the Utilities Regulation and Competition Authority towards finalizing a request for proposals document. When the RFP is finalized, he says government will publish the notice inviting interested parties to register to participate in a two-phase process. Phase one will involve an evaluation of the proposal submitted in response to the request for proposal. The evaluation will be based on predetermined criteria which will be used to determine which applicants would have the necessary capacity to offer mass market cellular services to a high level of quality across the Bahamas. Only those applicants deemed suitable in phase one will be allowed to participate in phase two, which will take the form of a spectrum auction. One person is dead after a home in Adelaide Village went up in flames this morning. Police say by the time firefighters arrived at the home around 1, it was fully engulfed. Once that blaze was under controls, officers reportedly discovered human remains inside the home. We're told police are now working to determine the cause of the fire and an autopsy will be conducted to determine the cause of that person's death. When AB12 returns, Atlantis's president and managing director George Marcantonis talks value-added tax. Stay with us.